Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial we will be looking at the mode of action of protein synthesis inhibitors. Now, Obviously the video about the antibiotics which will block the protein synthesis pathway. If you look at the central dogma of biology we are having DNA to RNA then RNA to protein. So now this kind of antibiotics are taking action in this case to block the synthesis of protein from RNA. Okay. Now I may, may write here RNA and from RNA to we produce protein and the process of this synthesis is called as translation. Translation, right? Now for this translation process I must tell you there are a coordinate action or coordinate function of many different components inside the cell and those components are one of the component uh, is RNA, mRNA obviously mRNA another component is ribosome so here mRNA is acting as the workbench for the synthesis because it is having all the codons then the ribosome is the factory or the machinery which will keep on adding anti uh, amino acid after amino acid to make the protein and third thing is tRNA which is a carrier molecule which will carry the amino acid for this protein synthesis pathway. So majorly this whole process is conducted by three major macromolecules mRNA, tRNA and ribosome and there are also other protein factors are involved and those factors some of them are initiation factors, some of them are elongation factors and some of them are termination factors. Right? But in this case these are the major three players of uh, translation or protein synthesis pathway inside the cell in cell of eukaryotes as well as in prokaryotes. Now in this case we are talking about the antibiotic activity against prokaryotic cell or bacterial cell. Right? Now in bacterial cell what we can see usually there are many different type of uh, protein synthesis inhibitors that are available. Some of them are 50S protein synthesis inhibitors and some of them are 30S. Now what do you mean by that? Now here this ribosome is consisting of two different segments. We know for prokaryotes it is having two different part. We know two different subunit of ribosome. One is the large subunit, one is the small subunit. So the large subunit of ribosome for them is 50S and small subunit is 30S. And all together we call it a 70S ribosome for uh, prokaryotic cell. Right? 70S ribosome. Two subunit, large one is 50S, small one is 30S. Right? So there are some antibiotics which will interfere with the activity of 50s subunit of the ribosome and there are other antibiotics which are interfering with the activity of 30s ribosome and there are another type of antibiotics which are acting with both the 70s, the, the, the compact form of the ribosome which is the complete 70s ribosome. So usually the process of a protein synthesis is blocked or inhibited by inhibiting the machinery itself which is the ribosome. Right? Now mRNA is simply playing uh, the role of a workbench, tRNA is playing the role of carrier but the machinery is in a ribosome so if you block the ribosome it will block the whole process. That's our funda for choosing the antibiotic to kill the bacterial cell during protein, protein synthesis. Okay. Now in this case if in this video we are talking about the 50S ribosome inhibitors. So let me write. We'll be talking about 50S ribosome inhibitors okay all right so in this the example will be azithromycin so let me write Azithromycin is the example. Now one thing I must tell you, for any kind of this protein synthesis inhibitors, the terminal part or the end part of all this protein synthesis inhibitor always with syn, most of the case. So if you want to remember or memorize the names, you get syn. So azithromycin, streptomycin, uh, neomycin, canamycin. Uh, gentamicin, all of them are protein synthesis inhibitors. Now, some of them are 50S, some of them are 30S, some of them are 70S. Right? But they are having a scene at the end. In this case, azithromycin is a 50S ribosome inhibitor. Okay, now 
here, here we'll be talking about the pro me mechanism of this activity. And also, I must tell you another thing is that uh, that this 50S subunit inhibitors or the group of antibiotics that are placed in 50S subunit inhibitor, they are termed as macrolides or macrolides, whatever they are termed as macrolides or macrolides. Not e should be S here. Macrolides, okay. Macrolides or macrolides. Now macrolides are uh, so among the macrolides, azithromycin is an antibiotic. So this is the group name. This is the antibiotic name. Okay. Now here what we will be seeing. Uh, so for understanding of the mechanism of action, you need to know the basic understanding of the protein synthesis in prokaryotes. Now in this video, uh, I am going to talk about a very briefly what is the mechanism is. Usually, what we are having, we are having mRNA, which is having all the codon. And so let me draw here. Let, let, let me draw in small scale here. Let's say here it is the mRNA having the codon, and here we are having the this uh, ribosome. Now the ribosome is having three different sites, if you remember. Three different sites. One is the E site or exit site, another one is the P site or peptidyl site, another one is the A site, right. In this case, this is the addition or attachment site. So this is, let's say, this is A, this is P, this is E. Simply, they are arranged like that. So these are the three different sites. And those sites are present both in 50S as well as in 30S. So here, this is the 50S, this is the 30S, and this is mRNA as we can see. Okay. So this is the whole translation complex or initiation complex for the translation. Now, after you make this mRNA ribosome complex completed, it will bring the tRNA. And tRNA, when we talk about the tRNA each time, the tRNA will bring, so let me draw it with black, uh, red color. So tRNA will, will have a, a region where it can bind with an amino acid. So tRNA is having a structure like that. I used to draw it like that. So here it is the amino acid attached, and we are having an anticodon, which will bind with the codon region in mRNA with a complementary match, right? So then this tRNA will move and first tRNA will bind here to this A site, right? So in the very beginning, it will bring this tRNA to this B site. So let's say it will bind to the A site. So after, the, after this anticodon with tRNA have this amino acid, for the perfect uh, codon, so it will bring it into the A site. Then this ribosome is having a ratcheting movement, so it, it moves like a ratcheting. That means if this is the two subunits, it moves something like this salt shakers, like that. So this kind of movement, ratcheting movement, allows them to move and slide along the mRNA. Now, as the ribosome is slide along the mRNA, the um, the tRNA which presents in A site will be migrated to P site, and the uh, amino acid and the tRNA present in P site will migrate to E site. So simply it's a translocation of tRNA as well as the translocation of amino acid or polypeptide. Now for example say here, here is all the time the attachment of uh, amino acids occur between this P and A site tRNA. That's very very important. Focus on this step. Now, there are two uh, two tRNA present there. So let me draw here. So this is one tRNA, this is another. Now this tRNA previously is holding amino acid chain like that. Now this tRNA is having only one. So let me draw it other color. It is having only one amino acid here, which is blue in color, right? So it is in A site, it is in P site, and E is free. Now what it will do, after the sliding, this this, I mean, this tRNA will migrate to E and this tRNA present in A migrate to P. That's the case. And during this process, they need to transfer this whole polypeptide chain to the new tRNA, which is present at this A site. That means, after this step, what we can see, in the E site, what we will be seeing, in the E site, so this, from this region, it will break it and it will transfer it to this new site, right? So after this transfer, what we'll get this T now this T will get a new its own and the rest of the amino acid attached like that. So this T will get this structure. 
and this previous t will become free. Now this previous t will migrate to the e side. So now the e, this t, this t migrates to this e side and it is releasing all its all of its polypeptide chain to this one. So now this one is previously A site, now it will migrate to P. So this one will be at this P site. And here it will having all this together. And then A site becomes free. Now as the A site is becoming free, another new tRNA will bring another amino acid. Let's say here now the amino acid is black at this place. That's how they start to translocate from one place to another place. So here, this this p uh, this tRNA migrates to this e. This one migrates to p p site, right? But during this translocation, remember that is the most important point. During this migration, during this translocation from p p to e and a to p, that one that tRNA having the polypeptide chain, it will bring this polypeptide chain to the new tRNA. That's the important step. This is the translocation step, right? and then they will move like that. So this is how polypeptide chains start to form and at the end of the process we get a huge polypeptide or a protein. Right? Now in this process of this 50S inhibitors what we can see they will bring that antibiotic and that antibiotic will come and bind with 50S subunit of this ribosome. Now as they bind with the 50S subunit of the ribosome, it will block this translocation activity from P site. So as a result of the blockage of translocation activity, so they are now blocking this part of this movement. So now the previous, and previous tRNA which is present at this P site, which is supposed to move on to the E site, is not moving. It is having a jam. It is becoming stagnant. So the protein synthesis now become stop. Why? Because there is no way for the movement of tRNAs there. All the time P site is full, A site is also jammed by another tRNA. Now rest of the part is not being possible due to the blockage of the 50S RNA, 50S ribosome subunit using the antibiotic. So they will bind to the 50S, they are modifying or distorting the 50S subunit in such a way that that will uh, block this translocation activity. So here what we are seeing blockage blockage to translocation activity at p site as this activity is blocked as p site rest of the process will be halted because every process is running it is a kind of translocation process so you need to be have a continuous running so if you block the p site which is the middle one it will block both the direction of activity so as a result, it will no longer function and protein synthesis will have a stop at this point. That's how this type of antibiotic works. Now these antibiotics, I remind you, the activity of these antibiotics are, is reversible. Right? So the modification they bring about in the 50th subunit of the ribosome is reversible in nature. So if we try, we can reverse this process. So if we try, if we remove the antibiotics, the process will again uh, start to uh, release this, uh, this uh, ribosome 50S subunit to the previous configuration and then they will start the protein synthesis again. So what it can do, it can stop the protein synthesis for a while, for a while, but it will not make the bacteria kill. Instead, what it is doing is that it will stop the synthesis of some proteins at a particular lifetime. Of bacteria. So what it is doing is that it is halting the growth of the bacteria. Because remember for the growth and division of bacterial cell it requires many new kind of proteins, cyclines and many expression of new proteins. So if these antibiotics are there and it is halting the protein synthesis, it will halt the growth, right? So it is halt, it will halt the growth of bacteria. So it is, as it is halting the growth but not killing the bacteria, we call this kind of bacterial antibiotic as a bacteriostatic antibiotic. That means it will stop or slows down the growth of bacteria but it is not killing the bacteria. Right? So it's a kind of bacteriostatic antibiotic like the macrolides or uh, azithromycin is an example for that. Right? In most of the protein synthesis inhibitors, they are of this uh, 
bacteriostatic in nature. Less of them are bactericidal. But remember, if we start providing these antibiotics from the beginning of the time, if we providing the antibiotics throughout the time for longer period of time, then many vital protein synthesis will also be stopped. Many proteins which will require, uh, which is required for the cell normal cellular process, will halt. As a result, cells start to uh, have a kind of dangerous condition and cell will die. So if we administer this antibiotic for longer period of time for same type of infection, in those cases it may kill the bacteria, but usually it is acting as a bacteriostatic agent, but not the bactericidal agent. Okay, so that's the process of 50S ribosome subunit inhibitors, and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.